episode 42 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Before we get stuck into what you're here for, i.e. the podcast, I want to see if you can help us. As of today, around 12% of our viewers on this channel are subscribers. That probably comes as quite a surprise and will probably appear quite low. But our goal is to raise it up to 50%. And to do that, we need your help. If you're a regular viewer of our content, whether that be our podcasts, videos at a conference, or even read our magazine, can you please give the subscribe button a little click below? Every subscriber we get, the better our content gets. Anyway, on with the show. Episode 42 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast comes hot on the heels of episode 41, where we introduce Mars Mineral to the Tyra Recycling community. Now it's the time to introduce another player to the Tyra Recycling community in the form of Rubber Matters. So today we're traveling to India, where we get to know the director of Rubber Matters, Mayur Bubna. Rubber Matters produces reclaimed rubber, crumb rubber, rubber powder, and steel from ELTs, and we are excited to talk to them. Anyway, now it's time for me to stop talking and to pass over to you and Scott, our editor, who has his interview with Mayur right now. So today we're with uh, Mayur Bhubna from Rubber Matters in India. Uh, Mayur, can you start off by telling us who Rubber Matters are, what they do? So even uh, we are a fairly new company, uh, you know, we just started two years back and uh, with a focus on rubber recycling, uh, which is why the name that Rubber Matters, because it's not only we are looking at recycling, but we are also looking at upcycling that how to further use the recycled products uh, in mainstream uh, rubber industry. Uh, so currently we are doing revulcanization of rubber. We are doing rubber granules and we are doing rubber crumbs. And uh, so being a new player, you know, we have our uh, uh, USPs and we have our uh, other things which goes for us. Um, yeah, that's what, that's what we are. Okay, so uh, let's focus on the, uh, the devulcanized sector at the moment. Uh, India is, uh, has, has many players in the, the reclaim field. Um, and, and that, I think, causes uh, um, the, the, the terminology between reclaim and devulcanization creates a little bit of confusion in the market. It certainly did for me because mm -hmm. reclaim in Europe has um, connotations of dirty plants, chemical plants, um, and, and it's, it's virtually been eradicated in, in Europe. I think right. the, the only players here now are um, LG and uh, Tyromar, Tyromar uh, mm -hmm. operating default systems. Correct, correct. So even, uh, you know, uh, the word reclaim, you know, has been there for almost 40 years, you know, before we started, right? The idea, you know, we may call it anything, we may call it reclaim, you know, we may call it devulcanized rubber, or I believe uh, what tyromer causes a tire derived uh, polymer, or TDP, if I'm not mistaken. Right? So we can have n number of uh, uh, ways of calling the product, correct? And, uh, but it's still a rubber devulcanized product. Devulcanization is the correct word. I believe that gives you a right picture of the product. In terms of, you know, uh, the industry, yes. So 40 years back, I would agree with you. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very low margin product. So there are things that when a low margin industry is there, so you don't have enough uh, bandwidth to, you know, have that kind of a setup. But today, like, for example, if you visit us, right, if you visit us, uh, we are that you won't even feel you're in a rubber industry for that matter. So things have changed a lot. You know, we have got automation coming in. We've got uh, industry 4.0 coming in this industry. So I believe that we are evolving. Yes. But if you say in terms of the word or the name that we need to call it, for me, I really, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. If if my client wants me to call it devulcanized rubber, I'll go ahead and call it devulcanized rubber. If he wants to call it reclaimed rubber, I'll go ahead and call it reclaimed rubber. 
the what matters is the actual product it's still a polymer which is recycled from tire and which is going to go back into the tire okay now the the process that you use um mm -hmm. I, I understand there are a number of, of, of ways of devulcanizing. I, I think in, in Europe the, uh, and in America, the, the commonest process involves injecting carbon dioxide into mm -hmm. uh, an extruder. Is, is that the sort of process that you use? Uh, no. So actually, we use a process called uh, uh, autoclave process. So in fact, uh, we are avoiding any sort of uh, inert air inside the process. Uh, so this process has its own uh, pros. So for example, the advantage of this process is I can make my devulcanized rubber with a very low muni. You know, a, a lot of tire companies in India and abroad, they're asking for, you know, uh, a muni level of 20 and 30. Uh, which in some other processes like a twin screw extruder or, or, a, or a company like Levgum, uh, I think they are Israeli-based company which are doing through chemical uh, thing, which is not possible in their case, correct? Uh, but yes, this process is proven. You know, that you, you find people who understand the process, they can control the process. Yes, this may not be the new uh, cutting edge uh, thing, but it's a, it's a proven technology and it works for a lot of people like us and a lot of companies, a lot of clients uh, who are in the tire industry for us. Okay. And, and the, the market for your your, uh, your devulcanized rubber, mm -hmm. there are a lot of players in India. Um, what sort of market share have you created in India? So we, we are primarily into high tensile uh, uh, devulcanized product. Uh, uh, in India, uh, it's a pretty new category. It's a pretty new category because till a few years back, uh, devulcanized rubber or reclaimed rubber was used as a filler. Yeah. So price point was an important uh, criteria, uh, you know, in purchasing and being in capturing the market share. But after, you know, last few years and post COVID, things have completely taken a new, I would say a new path for that matter. And now companies are looking to replace mainstream products with devulcanized rubber. So that's that's where we come into picture. We, 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 uh, so, so our product, uh, you know, as a filler would not be great for some companies, but yes, if they are planning to reduce their natural reclaim consumption, they are planning to reduce their uh, carbon black consumption. Yes we are definitely the player to be in. And it will take us time to capture that market, to educate that market. I, I understand that Europe is already understanding uh, the benefits of a high tensile uh, product, right? Indian companies, Indian tire companies are also uh, exploring that opportunity. Uh, they are doing their research and development on that front and it will take time. And I'm sure that uh, we, we will be one of the major impactors or major shareholders in that uh, segment. That that uh, is is interesting because looking at some of the recycled content in the, from some of the tire manufacturers, uh, they there is they're as low as one percent, uh, and although some of the big companies, Michelin, Bridgestone, are talking about fifty percent recycled content uh, in the future, we have we have secondary tertiary tire manufacturers talking about a recycled content of around 1%, 1.5% going into the future. Now, I suspect that that is largely a recovered carbon black. Right. But you're talking about substituting natural rubber uh, with, with devulcanized rubber. And that, I think, it could be a bit of a game changer. So I, I don't think that uh, re, uh, devulcanized rubber would completely uh, replace the natural rubber. You know, natural rubber is natural rubber because it gives you certain properties which re, uh, devulcanized rubber can never give you. Right. But yes, uh, uh, in terms of what you just said, 50%, uh, 
uh, because deorganized rubber right now in a tire industry is typically around 5%. Right? So what we are looking at is maybe uh, that 5% as a share is a huge market, is a huge market currently. And what I understood uh, from the research conference is that, yes, they are looking to double or triple this consumption in the tire industry. Other than tire industries, uh, you know, just to, uh, you know, throw it out there, it's already very popular. You know, molded products, conveyor belts, it's already very popular because their performance criteria is a bit lower than, let's say, a, you know, a high performance tire uh, to be there. Okay. So, <clears throat> you, 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 you're here with the, the, the podcast and mm -hmm. uh, you, you're looking to grow your market. Uh, what sort of markets uh, uh, are you looking to reach out to? Correct. Uh, so as I said, you know, we are very new. And uh, so we, we've we been till now able to capture a large share of conveyor belt and molded products uh, segment uh, within India. Right. And we have got the acceptability of the product that is there. Now, now we are looking out to reach out to the tire industry, you know, where the requirements are stringent, you know, quality uh, is uh, above anything else. And also, you know, uh, international markets, which are more aggressive on such products, you know, which are more open to exploring the uh, option that is out there. Uh, are there any particular markets that uh, you, you think might be attractive to you? So, uh, since uh, we comply by REACH regulations ourselves, uh, Europe is a very attractive market because uh, they value quality uh, over price. So that's for us is a great attraction, right? Uh, we are looking at US markets uh, in terms of, if you just ask me segment wise, then we feel that the uh, high performance and the OTR segment is quite attractive in these both uh, continents. Yeah, I, I think the opening into getting recycled materials into the tire industry mm -hmm. is probably through the, the OTR segment, the industrial tire segment, where right. uh, speed and uh, high performance is, is less of an issue. Um, so what sort of quantities would you expect to be selling? Well, more the merrier. <laughs> of course. <It> a... <laughs> so so, so I, I have not limited myself uh, uh, with any number on that front. Uh, we, we are just looking at smooth, smoother transactions and smoother acceptability of the products. Uh, I would never restrict myself or anybody in, within my company with a target. You know, if, if, you, if you keep a target, then you tend to relax a bit. So we are always, uh, you know, changing our targets and we are always trying to achieve uh, the best that we can given the situation. So then coming back to your um, your production, uh, mm -hmm. what sort of capacity do you have to produce devulcanized rubber or uh, granulate uh, or, or powder? So currently we are somewhere around the, my production capacity, somewhere around 8,000 tons a year per annum. That's for devolk, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so, and on top of that, if I add uh, granulation, that's also about 9,000 tons a year. Okay, so you, you're still, in the the early days of developing the company, uh, right. and my understanding is that you you appear to have set out um, higher standards, perhaps than some players, and yes. that you you are you're aiming for um, acceptance in the wider market. I'm I'm trying to be careful here. <laughs> Uh, so when we, when we set out in establishing rubber matters, you know, the question was, you know, where do we want to place ourselves? 
you know there are uh, in in the recycling industry for that matter you know th uh, there are so many ways you can uh, contribute to the industry so we we decided that we we want to be a player where we respect our own product what we are selling right and there is there is a there is a sort of a you know a testing methodology in terms of what quality we are providing to the client correct at the same time you know you you always respect your product regardless of what you make but the appreciation of the client is very important you know i don't want any client to come to me you know just because uh, i am economical for him i want him to come to me because my product makes a difference to his product so this is this is uh, this is where we set out to do and uh, you know the promoters including me we have no background in rubber industry we are not from the rubber industry this is our first venture in the rubber industry to be there so to set these goals you know uh, and uh, a bar so high was is quite difficult uh, to be frank but yes uh, it's not that it's not achievable we are getting there we are seeing the appreciation from the client we are seeing the repeated uh, orders that clients are giving us so we it looks like we are on the right track it's only that the speed that is it's only the momentum that now needs to be there is there anything else that you would like to add to the the story of rubber matters yeah, sure i i mean uh, you know we are young uh, you know we are still there and we are still learning you know uh, the important matter the important fact for us is uh, we are very keen to learn uh, we are not resting on our laurels we are not resting we don't have any history uh, of the industry right so we 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 appreciate if you know if somebody is uh, guiding us you know to improve our products or to you know in any way in, you know knowledge uh, is out there and we're looking for uh, people who can help us to do that because uh, we are more than a devulcanized rubber manufacturer we are more than a, a rubber recycler we want to be more than that right and that's the, the the whole ideology of what we want to be is in the name that it we want to make a difference in the industry uh, you, you want to make rubber matter yes i want to definitely make it matters you know people around there Great. If there's anything that you want to add, then then please do. Uh, so uh, the, uh, there there was this uh, concern, uh, you know, that we had shared in our uh, pre-interview, uh, uh, which you have also brought it up, uh, is the name, you know, how we call the product, right? And I and uh, I I've been battling with that myself, uh, and I'm trying to make it very clear that. Uh, you know uh, a a name that is commonly used uh, is just for people to understand the product right i i can i can uh, go ahead and call a fruit with its scientific name but uh, would it help me uh, sell the product right if i if i come back to you and uh, i tell you that i am trying to sell uh, moringa olifera you would be first shocked to understand what the product is actually and we are seeing that this kind of deviation from the name is is to generate uh, uh what can i say is to generate certain attraction mm -hmm. to generate certain attraction to the product what i would like uh, your viewers uh, to focus on in, on the product forget the name whether it is derived whether it is uh, retrieved whether it is devulcanized forget the name look at the product look at the specifications right look at how it helps your product development and then you decide you know uh, it can be i can be anything for you right i i can just uh, if you want your purchase orders to say something else you don't want it to call a it a reclaim or a devulcanized rubber i can just call it a, you know anything a or b or c whatever it is but don't go for the name right go for the quality go for the technical specifications and see how it helps your product and i feel that europe needs to look at that because uh, 
to be very frank i'll be very open here because we see these kind of deviations as a marketing gimmick coming in you know a pancake is a pancake uh, i can't call it some specialized batter uh, thrown over a ladle and made for you <laughs> right so that's it it's, it's this is what i would uh, you know i would like to uh, a message that i would if, if possible i would like to pass across to your viewers So there you have it. That's it for episode 42 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast. Thanks to you and Emma Yur for that inter for making that interview happen. Now, before we go, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to get more Tyra River Cycling content. And just to stay tuned for episode 43 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast coming to you very soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>